you guys, Wes here. Welcome to the first episode of 5 Minute Fridays where we take 5 minutes every Friday and explore a new topic in software development. So today we're going to take a look at the builder pattern which is a design pattern that can come in quite handy when you are creating new objects that have some large number of properties on them or are otherwise complex. So we're going to take a look at that in C Sharp and we'll be looking at a very basic console application that can be used to generate purchase orders. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the code that we have here for our app in Visual Studio. So the purpose of this little console app is to print purchase orders. And we'll imagine that we are a baking company um, and that we buy our supplies for our baked goods from various suppliers. And so the purpose of this application is to basically print those purchase orders to the console for whatever reason. <laughs> So you can see that in our main method, we're basically going to be calling this print purchase order method. It's going to take our purchase order object and then in one way or another, print out the details of that purchase order to the console. So we're not worried about how it does that. We're just going to look at the builder pattern and how we can use that to actually build out that purchase order object. So we'll do that in a few different ways. So the first way will be not to use the builder pattern at all. So this would be if you were just newing up an instance of a purchase order, um, just the standard way that you would create any object in C Sharp. So we have this uh, PO, which is a new purchase order. We're gonna pass that a type of uh, bread here, a string. We take a look at this object. We can see that this type is just a field um, that gets set in order to create our purchase order number. So if I pass bread here, and the PO number is going to be a string, which is bread underscore and then the date. And then I've got some other standard kind of properties here, a company name, a company address, etc. I have a vendor and a list of line items as well, each of which are types that I've defined elsewhere in my application. And finally, I have this total order cost, which is a property that just gets uh, calculated by looking at each of the line items and then summing their unit cost times their quantity. Okay, so that's my purchase order type. And if I want a new one up, then I can just create a new purchase order and perhaps um, just manually set all of its properties here. Likewise, if I need to set some complex object like a vendor or the list of line items, then I'll have helper methods or methods in a service layer elsewhere in my application to go and fetch those for this particular case. So since I'm making a purchase order for bread, I might have some method that returns my dry goods vendor or what have you. Then I can just directly pass that purchase order object that I've newed up here to the print purchase order method, which will print it to the console. Let's look at how we would do that with the builder pattern using a sort of fluent builder pattern syntax. So this is a pretty simple example, but what we would do is we would create a class called our builder class. In this case, I've called it our fluent PO builder. And it's just implementing an interface where I've defined some of the methods that are required for an, uh, building any PO. And I'm gonna be using this sort of fluent syntax. So my methods will have prefixes like with, for, and at. So I can say things like build PO with type for company at address. So this fluent PO builder class has a number of different private fields on it. These get set by the public methods that I've defined in my interface and that my builder class implements. And then each of those methods return back the fluent PO builder object. So you can see that what's kind of cool about this setup is that I now have a sort of fluent syntax where I just chain together each of these methods and they continue to return the, the same fluent PO builder instance um, that's getting created here as each of these fields get set by its methods. Now you may be asking, well that's great, but after all we're looking for a purchase order object, so how does our builder class return that type as opposed to itself? And so what I've done is just to find a build purchase order method on this class, which returns a purchase order. And what it does is it just sets the properties on that purchase order equal to the value that gets set on these private fields. Basically at the end of my method chaining here, what I can do is call build purchase order, and this will explicitly return a purchase order type. Now we can leave this off 
just to have a little bit less to code each time we want to create a new purchase order with our builder by defining a, an implicit operator. And this is just a way that we kind of tell the compiler, like there is a way to convert this fluent PO builder type to a purchase order type. And I will define how inside this method here. And how I do that is to simply call build purchase order on the purchase order object that is being built. Okay, so that's kind of nice. I found this method to be really useful for creating different types of complex data when doing things like automation testing. Okay, next, very quickly, I'd like to look at a second implementation of the builder pattern. This is maybe a little bit more of a classic builder pattern example that you may come across. It's a little bit more complex, so I've put the different classes for it here just to keep it separate from the other builder. And the way that this one is going to work is that we have this abstract base class purchase order builder which has several concrete implementations. So we can see that we have like a bread supplies PO builder, which extends this purchase order builder base class. Likewise, we have a cleaning supplies builder, which extends the, the same abstract base class. Then we have this director class that you'll often see in diagrams of the builder pattern. And it just has a, a method on it called construct. And it takes some concrete implementation of our purchase order builder and then calls you know some number of different methods on it which actually build out the instance of that purchase order. So these methods are overridden in the various concrete classes that extend this purchase order builder abstract base class. Let's say that we have the ability to add line items, add a vendor, and add a requested by date on any of our purchase order builders. So we may build like a bread supplies PO builder, which is going to always build a purchase order of type bread. It's always going to add a vendor um, with some helper method or some service method that returns our particular uh, bakery vendor. Maybe bread supplies, we always expect to have 14 days after we order them. So we can set that here. And then maybe the line items that we order for bread purchase orders are always salt and bread yeast. And so we construct our list of line items here as well. Quite similar to our fluent builder pattern, we are simply setting the value of the properties on some object to the construction that we have created inside of each of these methods. So we have a concrete bread supplies, PO builder, likewise we might need to order cleaning supplies, and then so we can explicitly construct that here in this concrete class. This is of course a little bit more complex than the Fluent Builder in that in our complex PO Builder here, we have this director class, which takes some concrete instance of a class that extends some abstract base class. But this type of pattern can also be really useful if you have lots of different ways to construct um, some very complex object, perhaps. Maybe in this case, it's a little overkill. All right, so let's head back into our main method here and we'll go ahead and run the console app. So you can kind of see what's gonna happen is that we're going to print a purchase order just by newing up an instance of a purchase order as you might um, just generally. And then we will use the Fluent PO Builder to create a PO. And then finally, we will use the classic builder pattern method, if you will, to create a PO. And just so you see how this classic builder pattern is kind of working, we have this builder field, which again represents the abstract base class purchase order builder. We have this var shop, which is our director class. This just has the construct method on it, which takes some builder. And then we set our builder to being, in this case, a cleaning supplies PO builder. And we tell our shop to simply construct a new PO um, by passing it this cleaning supplies builder instance. And then we can call print purchase order and the purchase order it itself is actually on this purchase order builder class. And of course the, the various overrides in our concrete class here are what are setting those properties. So let's go back and we'll go ahead and hit F5. So we'll go ahead and hit enter to see our first PO. So this is the one that is generated just by manually newing up an instance of a PO. So that looks pretty good. Next, we are going to go ahead and hit enter and see our second PO, which was built using the, the fluent syntax. In this case, we're actually building out the same PO. We're just using the, uh, the builder pattern here. 
And then finally, if we hit enter a couple more times here, we can see an example. This one produced by the more complex um, classic builder pattern with the director class and the various concrete implementations of purchase order builders, which have overrides for the different methods that actually build the purchase order out. Okay, so that's it. A little bit longer than five minutes for the first episode, but I'm still just trying to get the hang of things here. Anyway, I hope this was useful. Let me know if you've used the builder pattern for projects that you've worked on. Like I said, I found it pretty useful in some automation testing situations where we need to construct objects that have kind of a complex construction process. The fluent syntax is also kind of cool in automation testing. You have people writing tests who may not have all that much object-oriented um, programming experience and can just um, very easily create new instances of objects using a sort of fluent syntax. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and check out my channel for more long-form content if that's more your thing. Thanks and I'll see you next time.